We're going to start talking about variables and variable expressions. First, we need to understand what our vocabulary is. Vocabulary um, starts with the word variable. A variable is a letter that you may see in an expression, a mathematical expression, that represents a number. Secondly is a variable expression, which simply means that you're going to have a variable put into what looks like a math problem, like n plus 3 equals 5. Your variable is going to be the letter n. And lastly, when you see in, in directions the word evaluate, evaluate means you're going to solve for that expression. Solving for that expression typically means that you need to substitute in a value for the variable. We're going to go ahead and look at some examples of the kinds of things you're going to need to know how to do. Um, first of all, we're going to write equations and we're going to use tables of values. So if they give you a word problem, such as two more than a number, you need to know how to put that into a variable expression. Two more, the word more tells us to add, then a number. A number needs to be represented by a variable. You can pick any letter you want, but I'm going to pick the letter N for today. If we make a t-chart to represent this, and we substitute in some values for our variable N, we'll solve using that. So here we go. If we substitute in 0 for N, that would equal 2. If we substituted 1 in for N, that would equal 3. And if we substituted 2 in for the letter N, for the variable N, that would equal 4. Another example is 7 less than a number. Now it's important that you remember that when we learned our properties that the commutative property works for multiplication and for addition, which means it doesn't matter what order you put those numbers in, when you add them or multiply them, you're going to get the same answer. Commutative property doesn't work for subtraction or division, so we need to be careful when we place these numbers in our expression to make sure that they're in the proper order. 7 less than a number. Less than a number tells us that we're going to be subtracting, but we have to know which to put first. Do we put the 7 first or do we put the number first? Well, if I, I listen to what this sounds like, 7 less than a number. If I put it into a real life situation, I have 7 less than the 5 apples in my hand. That tells me I'm going to start with the apples. So we're going to start with a number and we're going to subtract 7. If we make a t-chart, and we substitute some values in for n. Uh, we can choose any numbers we want. Let's do 10, 11, and 12. If we substitute 10 in for n, 10 minus 7 would equal 3. If we substitute 11 in for n, 11 minus 7 is 4. And if we substitute 12 in for n, 12 minus 7 is 5. Now I want you to look at the pattern that we've just set up. We've done an addition equation and we've done a subtraction equation. Both times when we substituted numbers in for n that were numerically in order, so 0, 1, 2 up at the top and 10, 11, 12 at the bottom, look at the answers that we got. We got answers that were numerical also. They were in, in order. So we got a 2, 3, 4 here and a 3, 4, 5. Important to note that if you substitute numbers in that are in order that you will get answers out that are also in order. Okay, let's do a division problem. Again, division doesn't work with the commutative property, so we have to make sure we get this written in the right order. A number divided by 2. That tells us, the word divided tells us we're going to be using division. And this one we could pretty easily, from what it says, decide that we're going to take any number divided by 2. Let's make our t-chart and substitute in some values. Let's do... 12, 13, and 14. Okay, notice that the values I have are in order 12, 13, 14. And let's see if our pattern sticks around. So if we substitute in 12 for n, 12 divided by 2 is going to equal 6. We substitute 13 in for 2, 13 divided by 2 is going to equal 6.5 and 14 divided by 2 is going to equal 7. Note that our, our answers are again in order, but they are, they are not whole numbers. We have one that has a decimal in it. Okay, let's go on to our third example. Our third example uses multiple steps. Our problem says 5 more than 3 times a number. 
which means we need to group something here. We're going to group 3 times a number to begin with, 3 times n. And then we know that we add 5 onto that. It doesn't matter if you add 5 on the front or on the back. We make a t-chart for our values. And we'll go back to using 0, 1, and 2 for our values. Again, it doesn't matter what numbers you use. And let's go ahead and substitute in. 3 times 0 plus 5. 3 times 0 is 0. Then we add 5, so it's 5. Try the next one. 3 times 1 plus 5. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 5 is 8. And our third one, 3 times 2 plus 5. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 5 is 11. Now notice we have multiple steps in this one. And even though our values for n were in order, our values on the other side, our solutions did not come out numbers that were in chronological order or directly in order. Okay. Lastly, we need to look at if we substitute numbers, here we go, here's what we need. If we substitute numbers into an equation, being able to solve for that equation, you will have some like this on your assignments. Okay, so this should be pretty easy. Up in the directions, it tells us that we are supposed to use 3 for A, 6 for B, and negative 2 for C. So 13 minus A. We'd rewrite that equation putting the value of A in. The value of A is 3. And then we solve. 13 minus 3 is 10. Okay, we'll try this with the next one. B divided by 2. The value of B is 6, so we need to put in the value 6 and divide that by 2. 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. Okay, our third one. 5 times c, our value of c is negative 2, so we substitute that in. 5 times negative 2, we look, the numbers do not have the same sign, which means our answer must be negative. 5 times 2 is 10, so our answer is negative 10.